Hello and welcome to the HR Like a Boss podcast. I'm your host, John Bernadovich. I have embarked on a journey to get to know amazingly awesome HR and business professionals with the hope to find out what it takes to do HR Like a Boss. If you enjoy the show, please make sure that you subscribe and hit that five-star rating. Hello again and welcome to another episode of the HR Like a Boss podcast. I am so excited to be joined by Robin Schooling. Robin's someone I follow on Twitter and social media, and she has this professional way of stirring things up and making sure that people draw attention to the right things in human resources. And I know she's also acquaintances and friends with many of the people that I know within my professional network. So Robin, welcome to the HR Like a Boss podcast. Thank you, John. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. I start all guests out with the same question. How would you describe the purpose of human resources? You know, it, it's something I actually went through a, a, a bit of introspection about specifically around that probably about 10 years ago when I was uh, kind of having a midlife crisis, right? What, what Why is HR here? And um, I, I boiled it down to something very, very simple. And I think it's our reason for existence is we're here to connect the capabilities of individuals to organizational success. I, I think that's it in a nutshell. Everything we do is focused on that. You you and I were talking a little bit about the, 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 the how and the why HR professionals sometimes confuse activities or tactics with impact mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and what to do instead. So I'm just curious, your, your view on that and this idea of of making a difference through an impact and, and making sure that we're not solely focused on just activities? You know, I think it's um, foundationally, we have to remember, right? We're, when we're in HR, we're also, we're human beings like everyone else, right? And it's very easy to get caught up in sort of the the day-to-day -day hustle and, 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 and checking off, you know, tasks on to-do lists. Um, and, and, and so we end up finding that activity becomes the focus rather than what's the end result or what's the impact that we're making, whether uh, with, you know, to our organization, with the employees, with the team, whatever it may be. Um, and sometimes we emphasize activity because it's easier to measure, right? We can easily track, for example, how many job interviews we conducted or, you know, oh, X number of people went through a training session, whatever that may be. Um, but the real question that we have to ask ourselves to do impactful HR is, um, you know, what what's the quality of of what we're putting out? What's the effectiveness of these actions or these activities that we've taken? Um, so did the right people get hired? Not so much how many people were hired. Um, did the training sessions lead to improved uh, performance or better team dynamics or whatever that outcome was supposed to be, you know? So it's asking those questions and measuring those things um, rather than just checking them off. Which, which drives me then, Robin, to this idea of, okay, we're trying to support a business, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of people out there that will say to you that are HR professionals that I, I represent the company or mm -hmm. I must walk this fine line. And, and I know you, you have an opinion or two on this, and mm -hmm. I'm, cu I'm curious to get your, your take on all that and, and why maybe some of that mindset may be the wrong way in your opinion to look at it or, or a way for us to reframe that uh, so that we can, we, can, we can look at that in a, in a more positive, impactful way, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah. And it is, you know, a, a, it's a line, it's a saying, it's a, we can have it tattooed on our bodies practically because I've heard it so many times since I, since I started in HR, but I think, you know, HR represents the company as this sort of throwaway line. Um, it, it is somewhat flawed and, you know, at its worst, kind of to the extreme, it, it paints HR as, you know, kind of corporate puppets who are, are you know, uh, caring more about the organization, the bottom line, what have you, than the well-being of the people that make up the organization, right? And, and, it, and it serves to perpetuate this idea, this stereotype that, you know, HR, HR is there to protect the company at all costs, um, and I'm using air quotes there, but, um, you know, protect the company at all costs, even if that means ignoring or minimizing 
concerns or complaints or even potentially egregious or unethical behavior, right? That uh, of the, you know, that the employees may have brought forth. So it, 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 it leads us down this path of, um, you know, a, a, a perpetuating that stereotype, eroding trust, don't go to HR. They're, they're just out for the company. They're on the company side. They're never going to do anything to support you. And so we, we kind of go from that to this thought of, you know, oh, well, I'm in HR and I've got to walk this really fine line. And, you know, yes, there's, there's a sense of balancing appropriately, um, you know, the, the, the needs and the goals um, of the organization and balancing that with the, the needs and the goals of, of individual employees. And, and so there's some truth to, to one extent, but, uh, you know, I think it's much more realizing that uh, our role, again, I believe is, is creating this environment where, where the employees and the company, the employer work together harmoniously, you know, it's, it's creating this culture I, I hate to say creating because culture is just it is what it is but nurturing enabling a culture that's healthy that's inclusive um and and gets us out of this box where the thought is well hr is merely here to you know mediate disputes or enforce policies and they're always going to take the employer's side and and it sets us up for some danger when we allow ourselves to go down this they're they're only here for the company and then it may be bring kind of this chilling effect, right? And and this is when we run into these stories making the front page somewhere of, you know, Sally Sue employee who has left Acme Corporation and is now going public with this egregious behavior or this harassment or whatever was going on because she didn't feel she could go to HR because HR was kind of living in this this world of we're here for the business. And so it's finding finding the right mantra. And I and I think rather than HR is here for the business or we're walking this fine line, I think a better mantra is really, you know, you know, we're in HR and, and we champion a healthy workplace culture for everyone. Or you know, we are um we are here to uh make sure everyone Everyone is successful while we meet the comp the business objectives. So it's really just a way of how you approach what you do, what your philosophy of HR becomes. You've been an incredible guest. I get all all my incredible guests like you out with the final same question, <laughs> and it's pretty obvious why I ask it. But how would you describe someone that does HR like a boss? I think it's someone who. Um, again, bridges bridges the gap between the existing gap between uh, the needs, desires, and goals of the business, the needs, desires, and goals of, of the individuals who make up that organization. That's point one. Um, HR, like a boss, to me means operating ethically, truthfully. It means... Um, making and embracing human connections. Remember that we are all people together. How do we enable and nurture trust and um, and and support within our organizations? And it's also about embracing change um, and looking forward to the future and looking forward to change rather than running away from it and hiding our heads in the sand. Robin, thank you so much for being on the show. You did an incredible job. Thank you, John. And I, for one, cannot wait to read the book. Thanks for checking out the HR Like a Boss podcast. If it resonates with you, please leave a rating and review. Or better yet, subscribe and share with a friend. Until next time, let's continue to aspire to do amazingly awesome HR.